والله يدعو إلى دار السلام ويهدي من يشاء إلى صراط مستقيم إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره نعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها فإن كل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار وإنما توعدون لآت وما أنتم بمعجزين I praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he's the only one worthy of praise I seek his help, his guidance and his forgiveness I believe in him and I trust him I seek refuge in Almighty Allah from the evil of our passions Indeed whomsoever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guides him to al-Islam no one can mislead him after Allah. And whomsoever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put him astray, no one can guide him after Allah. I testify openly that there is no deity worthy of worship except Allah Rabbil Alameen. And I testify that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is his messenger and the seal of all the prophets. O Muslims, you must know that the best speech is the speech of Almighty Allah, which is the Quran. The best guidance is the course of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, which is his sunnah. The worst of all affairs is innovation and addition to the religion of Islam. Indeed, every addition to the religion of Islam will lead to hellfire. I adjure you as well as myself to fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to the best of your ability. Fear Allah and don't die unless you are in a state of Islam. After this, I greet you all with the greeting of Islam. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. May the peace and the blessing of Almighty Allah be with you all. I'd like to welcome you all for continuation of reading from the book Riyadh al-Salihin, Guardian of the Righteousness, by Imam al-Nawawi, rahmatullahi alayhi. And today, inshallah, we have a new chapter under the main title of Prohibited Issues and things that Allah had prohibited and his messenger sallallahu alayhi wa We had talked before about backbiting and we talked about listening to backbiting and the necessity of defending our Muslim brothers and sisters when somebody backbites them. And also we talk about what we supposed to do when we hear ill talking about somebody or about the deen of Allah that we need to depart ourselves. Now we're talking today about something called a namima. What is a namima? Namima is one of the acts that prohibited in Islam. And you may call it in English a carry tale. A person who carry tales. He hear from this, he take it to the other person and say so and so said such and such, such about you. And after this, he would go to the other person. I say, last night, I visited so and so. And he spoke very bad about you. And he say this and that. As a result of this, people start hate each other. People will start feel bad about each other. It may even come about a fight. It may it can cause another fitna between two brothers, two families, a husband and a wife or a wife and her mother-in-law, all these things that sometimes we do it, we are not paying attention to it. 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala discredits such a thing and saying Hammazin Masha'in Binameem. Hammazin Masha'in Binameem. That he walked carrying tails. Okay? So Allah discredits such a thing. Carrying tails. Masha'in Binameem. Yamshi Binameem. Go carry tails between the people. Is this a chapter which Imam al Nawawi rahmatullah alayhi gave it in his book? Chapter number 257. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saying in Al-Quran in Surah Qaf, Surah number 50, verse number 18, مَا يَلْفِذُ مِنْ قَوْلٍ إِلَّا لَدَيْهِ رَقِيبٌ عَتِيدٌ Any uttering, any saying that you said, Allah saying that is going to be recorded. There is two watcher. There is a raqib and there is a atid. Two angels which is they record anything that you say. Which part of it is, can be the backbiting, or can be what? The carrying tails. So remember, when you talk, and you carry tails to others, that is recorded, and is going to be presented before Allah in the day of a judgment. The Prophet wasallam showing us how serious it is for a person to carry tail. The Prophet ﷺ in hadith which he reported by Huzaifa, may Allah be pleased with him, this hadith 1536, he's saying, Layat Jannah Namam. Namam is the door of Namima. And Namima is carrying the tail from a person to person for purpose of causing fitna between the people. The Prophet ﷺ saying, a person who act on this, he could not enter Jannah. Could not enter Jannah. And there is a lot of explanation about it. What does it mean? That means a not entering Jannah at any time. But this will be for a person who knows that Namima is forbidden and he does not give it any Respect and he says that this is not haram. Or that mean that this person is not going to enter Jannah when the general body of the Ummah will enter Jannah, he will be delayed. So he's not going to enter with those who go in the beginning. So this the Prophet ﷺ. But it is enough, enough discouragement that to know, even if you will enter Jannah, but how long you're going to wait, Allah knows best. This is enough to discourage you from you to be carrying an amima. The Prophet ﷺ in hadith which he reported by Ibn Abbas, may Allah be pleased with him, that مَرَّ النَّبِيُّ صلى الله عليه وسلم بِقَبْرَيْن فَقَالَ إِنَّهُمَا لَيُعَذَّبَان أو إِنَّهُمَا يُعَذَّبَان وَمَا يُعَذَّبَان فِي كَبِيرٍ بَلَا إِنَّهُ كَبِيرٍ أما أحدهما فكان يمشي بالنميمة أما أحدهما فكان يمشي بالنميمة وأما الآخر فكان لا يستتر من بوله uh, In this hadith the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم he was passing by two graves and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala enabled the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم in this moment in that time to get to know what's happening in the grave and the Prophet ﷺ had told the Sahaba, these two people on the grave are going through a hardship, difficulty. They are in a big torment. They are in a big punishment. They are يعذبان وما يعذبان في كبير. It's not because they commit adultery or they commit murder or they stole. He said it's not a big sin. But indeed it is big. How could not be big but it is big. That means it is not a big in the act itself. But it is big in the result of it. Because look, when somebody talk and say, hey, uh, by the way, so and so, this is not your friend. Yesterday I was in the meeting and I heard he saying about you that you are not really, you are not good person, you are not honest person. You know, as a result of this, this person can go and fight with this person. Now the other person, because this person fight him or curse him, now he go and pull his gun and come and shoot the person. 
So the act, it didn't take too much, but the result became so huge. It's so huge. So he says the first one, um, uh, as for the first person, what was his crime? He said, He carries the tail from a person to a person. And this it caused a serious problem in the family, in the Muslim community. Even it can cause a problem between countries and countries. You see? So we are not supposed to be involved in something like this. For what reason? For what reason we're going to carry tales? This is mafsada. You spoil and destroy the relationship among the ummah, among the family, among the Muslim community. As for the second person, the Prophet ﷺ is saying, كان لا يستتر من بوله. The Prophet ﷺ said both them, or these two persons in the graves, are being in torment, being tortured, being in punishment. And they are not being punished because a great sin. But indeed, they are great sin. One of them used not to save himself from being soiled with his urine. Now, we need to pay attention to this. When you are not watching and protecting, shielding yourself from your urine, it can destroy your salah. Because when you sit to urine or stand to urine, the splash, the splash that comes as a result of the urine, comes in your body, comes in your clothes. After this, you go to make salah and you have impurity in you. Your salah is not good. Your wudu is not good. So you did something small, but the result caused spoiling of your prayer. Now you can see why the Prophet ﷺ said is not a great, but it is a great. So two things that we have to watch for them. One, stay away from carrying tales. It's not your business. Whatever he said, whatever is between him and Allah. Number two, be careful when you urine from the splashing because it can spoil your prayer. Inshallah, we'll go for a break. And until this moment, inshallah, reflect on the meaning of this hadith. Thank you for watching. Hey, everyone, check this out. If you are confused or surprised or a little astonished or maybe you have questions about life or the hereafter or maybe you need some help what about someone you can really trust someone reliable feel free to ask Huda Alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salam ala Rasulillah. Welcome back to our segment concerning the duty of the Muslim to stay away from carrying tales and the seriousness of this matter. And the previous hadith that we need to reflect on it a lot because nowadays we notice with this uh, airports and different places in our jobs that the situation of the bathroom is not convenience for us really to to be watch watchful and be careful with urine. Uh, so this is something very important. We have to take the proper means, and this also to let us number two to understand about the proper way of uh, stinja. Because this is part of, of uh, our deen. The Prophet ﷺ said, At-Tahuru Shatru Al-Iman, purification, is half of the faith. And as uh, Sheikh Al-Albani, Rahmatullah alayhi, his famous word, Ma bunya ala fasid, fa huwa fasid. Whatever been erected in corruption will be corrupted, or whatever been built in something that is not solid, is not going to be solid. So your salah, your salah is very important. 
and you pray five times a day and this is something that you're going to meet Allah with it so if you are not taking care of your proper cleaning proper stanza this will be a serious problem with your prayer you can be praying but the salah is not acceptable so stanza is something very important and to some people they may think that stanza or washing private parts is only when you defecate this is not correct you supposed to wash your private parts doesn't matter if you urine or you defecate does not have to be water but at least that you have a napkin a cloth handkerchief something that you utilize to uh, clean yourself properly doesn't matter if you urinated he or she or defecated he or she is something very important also that the people not to be in rush you are not supposed to be in rush okay so because sometimes a person that if a rush is still some drops of urine in the penis and is not been released and this as soon you start to move is going to be coming in your clothes so this is the reason the prophet sallallahu alaihi saying وَمَا يُعَذَّبَانِ فِي كَبِيرٍ They are not punished because a great major sin. But indeed it is a major because the result of it. So please, brothers and sisters, be careful. The splashing of the urine, the cleaning of the private parts, that we should take our time, that we should make sure that we clean and make the proper stinger because our salah, it have to be guarded it have to be saved and we have to do everything properly so our salah to be established on a right foundation now we have here another small chapter Imam al nawawi rahmatullah alayhi had put it in his book Guardian of the Righteousness Riyad al-Salihin and this is chapter number 258 and he's saying the propagation of current tales to the Officers. That means باب النهي عن نقل الحديث وكلام الناس إلى ولاة الأمور إذا لم تدعو الحاجة تدعو إليه الحاجة كخوف مفسدة ونحوها. And this, you sometimes reading the title itself is very important to understand that he's saying prohibition that is haram to carry the tale and the saying of others. To those who are in a charge, the principal of the school, the husband, the mother about her children, uh, the emir over Ra'iya or the king over the kingdom or the president over the country, whosoever that is in charge. If there is no necessity to take this tale, you don't take it. So what does this mean? Is it correct for those people to be spying? Of course not. Of course not. Allah is saying very clear Quran. Don't spy on one another. Okay? If there is a reason, if there is a reason that we are sure that this person or causing something is going to damage the ummah, is a different issue. Is a different issue. But now we became our job and our measure and became the, the spies more than the number of the community. It doesn't make sense. If you have a, in, in a community 100 members, okay? So now you have 80 members of this community spies. This person is spy on 10 people and this person is spy on the spy and the whole thing. Of course, we don't have any more trust in each other. We are not uh, implementing the deen anymore we start in doubting everybody and this because what everybody concerned about the chair everybody scared about the chair so this is not properly that we keep carrying tales to those who are in a charge unless that we know that these people trying to destroy the Muslim community these people they try to to spread some uh, bad information they try to cause mischief in the earth these things now 
we need to put a block for it. So as long as there is no harm happened to the Muslim Ummah, we could not be carrying tales. And like I said, it is the proper approach that you approach as a person who committing the wrong first, try to correct them, try to advise them. Now if not, and the harm will be go beyond the person, now you can take it to the next level. You don't have to take it all the way up unless that the person, as example, let's give example. We have a problem in the family. And now if you said to the father, you know, the father is going to be more strictly and more hard on the children. Maybe you can say to the older son to correct his sister or to correct his younger brother. Maybe he tells the mother. So you shouldn't have to take it to the father. But if you found the child that you correct him, it didn't stop and his older brother was not capable to fix it, now you can take it to the father. Now as you see, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saying, وَتَعَاوَنُوا عَلَى الْبِرِّ وَالتَّقْوَى وَلَا تَعَاوَنُوا عَلَى الْإِثْمِ وَالْعُدْوَانِ Help one another towards righteousness and good deed. But don't, Allah said don't, help one another towards what? Towards sin and the transgression. Sin or transgression. You are not supposed to transgress against your Muslim brother. Don't do anything that causes transgression. And we said before in the previous classes, the property of the Muslims, the honor of the Muslim, the blood of the Muslim is secret. You are not supposed to violate this right of his with no just cause. And remember, you're going to be asked by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Before the president, before the king, before the emir, before the imam. Always have rikaba from Allah. Always be concerned about Allah before anybody else. What you're going to do, say to Allah in the day of judgment, when you, Allah asks you, why did you expose this person? Why did you take his story to somebody else? So your intention has to be right, and that you try to correct it, it didn't work. And after this, he sees that there's going to be a mischief for the community. Now you can take it to the judge, to the court, to the police, whosoever that will stop this. So Allah say, and do not help one another in sin or transgression. Surah number 5, verse number 2. In hadith number 1539, and Ibn Mas'ud قال, قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم, لا يبلغني أحد من أصحابي عن أحد شيئا فإني أحب أن أخرج إليكم وأنا سليم الصدر. Subhanallah. And he, he's the Prophet sallallahu And those are the Sahaba. This is the best ummah. The best community. And the Prophet sallallahu is the best man. And he telling the Sahaba, giving them instruction about not to carry tales. What they said or what they didn't say. The Prophet sallallahu is saying, None of you inform me about what others had said. In another way, say, none of my companions should convey to me anything regarding another because I desire to meet every one of you with a clean heart. This is the Prophet, and those are the best ummah, the best community. And the Prophet, telling the Sahaba, sometimes. Brothers and sisters, sometimes we say something in a moment of anger. Sometimes we don't mean the word. So you could not be jumping right away. Oh, I heard him. I swear by Allah he said it. I saw him do that. It's true he said it. It's a moment of anger, but he doesn't mean it. So the Prophet ﷺ saying that don't bring whatever been said in my absence. Whatever dispute have been between you and each other and what they said about me or whatever it is don't bring it to me why because the prophet sallallahu as a leader as an imam as a person is in a charge he doesn't want to deal with the people having something already in his heart against them he want to come with salim al-sadr he want to come with an open heart to everybody because when you already talk to somebody about what somebody did, 
he already taken a stand from him that this person did this, this person said that. So we have to understand that carrying tails is prohibited in Al Islam and is not going to be something helpful for the Muslim community or for the Muslim family. And only if we see a harm, only if we see harm will spread in the Muslim community, mischief. Now in this moment, we can take a different approach. And let's try to take it, you understand, to a higher level. After this, another higher level. Don't jump the gun like they say one time. Let's be kind to each other, merciful to each other. Be patient with one another. Try to correct one another for the sake of Allah. And remember that Allah is a raqib watcher over you. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us all with the proper acting according to Islam, the Quran and the Sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Until I see you again, I'm your host, Muhammad Saad Adli. May Allah bless you for watching.